Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today we continue my quest to create a 360 card custom Mario themed draft cube. If you haven't already seen my first video on the topic, that explains what the whole project's about, what the different cards are that I'm trying to design, the different strategies I'm trying to create for the cube, all that stuff. So there's a link in the video description to check out that first video. Uh, but otherwise, we're gonna be going over a bunch of cards today, uh, mostly in the like heroes uh, part of the set that is like heroes and power-ups. And so let's start off with Toad Brigade. So I've, I have realized that there's like not enough cards with super in this set. So super is this mechanic. If this creature would leave the battlefield while enchanted, instead exile it and return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So the idea is if you enchant the creature, then it's sort of like can take a hit, can die once, or can you know, be destroyed once without actually dying and it just loses its power up, right? So that's the idea behind super. So I, uh, I'm gonna start off this video with uh, four cards with super. Um, and I specifically need to design more like green and red. I have a lot of white cards with super. So Toad, Toad Brigade is a hybrid card. It can be either green or white. Um, most of my Toad cards in this set have been green, white. So, so it's got the super ability. Uh, I haven't taken advantage of the fact that whenever a creature with super while it's enchanted, if it if it dies while it's enchanted, it actually leaves and comes back. And so it can have an enter the battlefield trigger that triggers it both when you cast it and also when it dies while enchanted. And so this is my first card that I've designed that actually does take advantage of that. Whenever Toad Brigade enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 green and white fungus creature token. So when you first cast Toad Brigade, it's basically two 2-2s two for four mana, which is a pretty, you know, it's a pretty reasonable rate. But if you're able to enchant it, and then if it dies, um, you know, your opponent's, you know, spent resources, maybe a, a kill spell or something, killing your card, uh, not only do you get to keep Toad Brigade, but you get another 2-2 token, because it'll leave the battlefield and come back. So this gives you a lot of good uh, reason to want to enchant Toad Brigade and have it, you know, see combat or draw removal from your, from your opponent. Um, but otherwise, it's still, I mean, 2 2 twos for 4 mana is not bad. So this is a this is a nice card for for the super, you know, the super part of the set. I've made a, a fungus token for him as well. Uh, the Toad Brigade is I guess I didn't really explain. This is like a group of five toads that come together and I don't know help Mario or something. <laughs> I'm not really too familiar with what they do. I think they're in Mario Galaxy. I mean that looks like there there's Lumas in this art. Anyway, um, yeah, this is a sweet fungus token. A member of the Toad Brigade here. Uh, and then Toadsworth is my next card, another card with super. Toadsworth is uh, Princess Peach's steward. He first appeared in Mario Sunshine as like her, her caretaker. So he's got super. Um, enchanted creatures you control get plus one, plus one and gain trample. To be fully honest, Toadsworth should probably be white. He's kind of more of a white card, like flavorfully, he should probably be a white card. But I really kind of need more like mono green and mono red super cards in this set. And so I just put him in green. Anyway, Enchanted Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain Trample. Again, incent incentivizes you to play more super cards together and just play more auras. It gives you more reward for playing auras, where auras can normally be like a card disadvantage mechanic. Because you enchant a creature, and then your opponent can use one kill spell to kill both the creature and the enchantment. So this helps incentivize you and get some extra value out of those auras. But, uh, yeah, and Trample's a really good ability when you're buffing your creatures. It prevents your opponent from being, being able to chump block. So this is a, a really strong card if you're heavy in that uh, in that uh, mechanic in this set. Uh, Diddy Kong, I don't think he needs any introduction. He's a member of the DK crew. <laughs> Originally, I wasn't going to do any Donkey Kong cards except for Donkey Kong. But uh, Diddy Kong is actually a driver in Mario Kart, so I felt okay, and I really just need some red super cards. And super, in my mind, only goes on playable characters. So Diddy Kong's in the set. Um, he's got this pea shooter, or I don't know if it's called a pea shooter. Anyway, he shoots, he, sh he has a little gun that he can shoot with. Uh, so Diddy Kong has first strike as long as he's attacking. So this guy, even if he doesn't have super, is a like pretty reasonable aggressive card, but you can enchant him without risking you know, card disadvantage. And so a uh, nice little red super card. Uh, if you get him pretty big, he's really hard to block because he's got first strike when he's attacking. So I think a nice reward for, for being aggressive and having auras in your deck. Uh, and then Cat and Anna. So this is probably a much more obscure card for a lot of you guys. 
Uh, they're from the WarioWare series. So they're playable characters in the WarioWare series, which I'm including in, in the set as can, you know, canon or, or part of the Mario universe. Um, yeah, again, they're super because they're playable characters. Uh, they're ninjas, so their creature type is human ninja. They're 3-3 three, three for 3. As long as Cat and Anna is attacking, you may cast aura spells as though they had flash. So basically they're like, it. they turn all of your aura spells into combat tricks when you're attacking. So again, these guys incentivize attacking. That's a theme you'll see throughout a lot of the cards in the set because incentivizing, incentivizing attacking is a way to keep the games moving, keep them from stalling out, keep you from getting bored. Uh, in game design, it's really important that the game ends before the players are like ready to call it quits. Because if the players are ready to call it quits, that means they're not having fun anymore. So you want the games to move along and end while the players still want to play more, essentially. Um, so this is incentivized attacking is great, especially red green in this set is a really aggressive colored pair. And so, uh, so these guys uh, let you play combat tricks on your attacking creatures uh, when they're attacking. And so it's a nice ninja mechanic. Wizards of the Coast has never actually printed a red ninja. So I, I definitely didn't want to include ninjutsu or anything because that's not a really red mechanic. But uh, I feel like I've found a way to... I feel like this is a pretty good way to make um, red interact with auras in a way that feels very red. And uh, also feels very ninja-like. So... It's a little bit of a of a contrivance here, but I think it works out pretty well to to create a package that that makes sense. All right, moving on, we got Pucci. Pucci is Yoshi's dog. I think I have an extra. Do I have an extra line of text? No, okay, that's good. So Pucci is from the Yoshi's series, like Yoshi's Island. It's like, yeah, the the Yoshi's series. Um, he basically walks on terrain that Yoshi can't walk on and gives you a platform to walk on. Anyway, Sacrifice Poochie, target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Um, he's a 2-3 two, for 2, which is a pretty nice rate. Uh, it's pretty pretty good uh, stats for, two, for a 2-drop. And um, basically the idea that I was thinking of here is you can have him like go walk in a pit that you can't walk in and, and you can like, you know, jump on him and jump out of the pit, whatever, to, to walk over like some spikes or something sacrificing him like he's normally a pretty indestructible creature so sacrificing him is kind of weird but you can think of sacrificing him as like him getting stuck in a pit or something i don't know maybe it should be exile him or something whatever he 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 uh he adds nicely to the like enchantment like aura part of the set because you basically allows you to enchant one of your creatures that doesn't have super uh if you haven't like drawn your creature with super yet uh without risking card disadvantage and so I have a lot of cards like that in this set that promote enchanting those creatures without uh, without risking too much card disadvantage. Yoshi Egg, another another uh, card in, in that part of the set. Uh, it's an O2 defender for three. This is supposed to mimic uh, Dragon Egg. So let's let's pull up Dragon Egg. Um, so Dragon Egg is a red card that uh, when it dies, you get a 2-2 red dragon creature with flying, and it's got fire breathing as well. So this is uh, has the same stats and everything, except it's green. And when it dies, you may look at the top five cards of your library and put a creature or aura card from among them onto the battlefield. So instead of getting a 2-2 flying fire breather, you get something. It's a mystery, which really matches the flavor of the Yoshi Egg, right? Pops open, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, sometimes Yoshi eggs have items in them, like aura cards. Sometimes you trap creatures in, in Yoshi eggs. It's a mystery every time. <laughs> anyway, this card might uh, be really hard to attack into because you're afraid of what might come out. But at least you know that your opponent, like if you're attacking into Yoshi egg, you know that your opponent isn't like in control of what's on top of their deck. And so you know that they can't like stack it too bad against you and get their, you know, super powerful bomb uh, with 100%. Uh, certainty so this will be something i'll have to monitor to see if it if it's like creating stall like board stalls where people are afraid to attack but um i like that it mimics dragon egg pretty well roulette block is actually a card that uh is based on a custom magic card from the custom magic reddit i think i yeah, have it up here so the custom magic reddit is a is a great place where all kinds of people are designing all kinds of really cool unique cards we've fate uh, was a card based on like the, the upcoming Theros set. Um, and I thought it was really cool. It was like a really cool white um, card filter spell. And so I've modified it a little bit, made it a little bit more powerful 
because you get to choose artifact or enchantment. But so anyway, the card says choose artifact or enchantment. Scry. Oh, let me give credit to the author. It was Yuvalito High, <laughs> this guy on Reddit. Anyway, scry four, then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a card of the chosen type, put it into your hand. So if you need an aura, you can choose enchantments. If you're like playing a vehicle deck and you need a vehicle, you can choose artifact. Um, scry four is a lot to scry. It lets you set up a lot of card draw. Uh, if there's like a bunch of cards you don't want, you can just put them on bottom. Otherwise you can control the order in which you're drawing your cards. And you can also make sure that the top card of your library has the chosen type. Now it's not guaranteed that you'll be able to, you know, if you scry four, it's not guaranteed you'll get an artifact or enchantments. Kind of depends how you built your deck. So this is a tricky card to draft and like play because you, you really need to be aware of what's going into your deck in order to play it well. But even if you miss, Scry 4 is still a pretty strong ability. So I like this card. I look forward to playtesting with it. I think it, it has a lot of flexibility and like has, rewards you really well for playing well, um, knowing what to Scry to the top and what's, what to Scry to the bottom and stuff, and for deck building correctly too. Next up is Star World. <laughs> this is sort of an experimental card that will maybe get cut because I don't really love having one-off uh, instances of cards uh, or of uh, mechanics and level up was a pretty strange one if you've never seen it before so level up one is the uh, ability here you can pay one mana put a level counter on this level up only as a sorcery so this land does nothing if it doesn't have any level counters on it but if it has at least two level counters you can add one mana of any color if you have at least five level counters you can add two mana of any one color this is supposed to mimic uh, cards like Ruptures. Oh shoot, I forget what it's called. Anyway, um, a card. There's like a land that enters the battlefield tapped, and you have to pay one. Uh, but it can tap for a one mana of any color, and so this kind of mimics that. Um, like entering the battlefield tapped means the land doesn't tap on the on its first turn, so it kind of costs one, and then you have to pay another one, another one mana, uh, and so that that's another one. You know, so anyway, it costs you two mana before you can really use the land, and so that's why level two to four is where it uh, adds one mana of any color. But if you if you dump a bunch of mana into it, it's also acceleration, which is really powerful on a land having a built-in acceleration. So I like the the card. The flavor, of course, is you know it's Star World from Super Mario World. Um, it's a like warp zone, um, and as you beat more levels, you get access to more of the world which is very flavorful in terms of like, you know, having access to more lands gives you more colors. So, and then if you complete Star World, you get to go to Special World. And so this level five plus is if you've beat all five levels, you get to go to Special World and add two mana of any one color. So it's got some nice flavor, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little wary of having a card like this and it might be really hard to understand for players that haven't seen this mechanic before. And it's the only, it's the only, only instance of this mechanic in the set. So is it really worth adding the complexity? Probably not, but it's a fun card to look at in the meantime, and so maybe it'll get cut later. Next up is Atop the Battlements. I was kind of surprised to find that this effect had never been printed before, and so it's <laughs> it's really pretty hard to balance. Um, so the flavor of Atop the Battlements is the Super Mario World boss fight. In order to damage Bowser, you have to jump on a Mecha Koopa and throw the Mecha Koopa into Bowser. And if you do that enough times, you kill Bowser eventually. And so the that's the flavor. When whenever a blocking creature dies, it deals two damage to his controller. So the idea is if you're able if you're able to kill your opponent's blocking creature like the Mecha Koopa, you can use it, throw it into Bowser. Um, yeah, like I said, Wizards has never printed a card quite like this before. So does it like I'm not sure where exactly it should be in terms both of cost and damage. I originally tried it at uh, costing four and dealing three damage. I, I didn't ever actually play test it that way, but. Um, I was convinced by my Twitch chat that that might be too powerful, so we're going to try it at this, but it definitely needs some playtesting. I was yesterday able to playtest it with, uh, with this version, and I did get it into play, and it did deal two damage, but my board state was, like, so overwhelming at that point that it didn't almost matter that I had this card. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It prevents chump blocking. That's the main thing it does, and it also, like, um you know, damage your opponent if they have to, like, trade off creatures during combat. So this is really promotes aggressive strategies. And in this set, red-green is a very aggressive color pair that really wants this kind of effect. But I don't know. I don't know what to cost it. I don't know how much damage it should deal. So this is something I'll have to probably tune over time. Um, 
But yeah, I like that I was able to come up with a unique effect like this, and it was all based on designing to a constraint, which was trying to match the flavor of the Mario fight, which is uh, which is one of the really cool things about designing a, a, a top-down set like this. Top-down means you take the flavor and designs card, design cards based on it. You come up with ideas you wouldn't normally come up with. I think that's really cool. All right, there's three more cards in this video. Let's get to them. Lunge Fish is a 3-3 Flash. This... Uh, this is a fish that jumps out of the water at you uh, from the Yoshi's Island series. Pretty straightforward card. This this type of card is really nice to have in the set because like if you see it in a draft pool, you can just like read it, know what it does, move on to the next card. Uh, might fit your set, might fit your deck, might might not. If you're like in a deck with a bunch of vehicles that cost uh, that have like crew three, you, this is a pretty nice card. You can flash it in and like surprise block your opponent uh, with your like crew three vehicle, that sort of thing. But, um, I mean, it, its stats are fine. It's like a perfectly playable card. Uh, you can you can often get card advantage by blocking, uh, surprise blocking an opponent's creature, that sort of stuff. But uh, really straightforward, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Bounding Dolphins. So uh, these are dolphins from Super Mario World again. They've, I think they've appeared in some other games. I'm not sure though. Um, I like this art a lot. This is just, they're just so happy, which is kind of how, how they feel in the game too. Um, they're a, they match the blue-white strategy of early game defense, late game evasion. So early game, uh, they're a 1-3, which is a really efficient blocker for one mana. And they can even crew vehicles that have a crew one cost, or they can help crew another vehicle if it has a higher cost. One in a blue tap, target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. So this is the late game evasion effect. And you can see the, the flavor here is, you know, <laughs> Luigi's gaining flying over this fish that wants to wants to get him the the dolphins letting him gain flying so pretty strong flavor pretty strong uh yeah good defensive card without being you know crazy powerful or anything and the last card for the video this is a very powerful card i i don't know if this card is too powerful it might need to cost one more i think it's a very good card if you're in the mario maker shard which is uh red or sorry uh blue green white it just costs blue green but blue green are enemy colors and anyway in this set this signals pretty strongly you should be in the architect shard and it's and it's supposed to be like the from the art and the name you should it's pretty obvious it's a very my card and we've got this water uh watermark here in the background so it's a three mana look at the top four cards of your library reveal any number of permanent cards that don't share any card types and put them into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in any in any order so architect in this set is a mechanic that cares about having four card types on the battlefield so you basically want to land a creature an artifact and an enchantment and maybe if you can get a Planeswalker, that's pretty good too, but there's not that many Planeswalkers in the set. So this card can actually draw four cards for three mana. If you look at the top four and they happen to have four different card types that don't overlap at all, you can draw all four, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and so this incentivizes being in a deck with a lot of different card types that don't overlap. It also lets it also like enables you to get Architect um, because you can get a couple cards that have different card types. So this is both a good enabler and a good like payoff for just building a deck that that uh, is in that architect strategy, and yeah, I mean it's just I think it's just a really strong card. Uh, might be too strong, but I don't think so. It's at its like worst, it's an anticipate with or not anticipate uh, impulse, which lets you look at the top four and pick a card and put it in your hand. If you like, I mean, as long as you have any permanent card in the top four, you can do that. Um, chances are pretty good you're going to draw two cards off this. So two cards for three mana and with a little bit of card selection is, is not too bad. But there's going to be times where you draw three cards. I don't think that's going to be too rare. And I think four cards is <laughs> probably not going to happen like at all. But being able to tr potentially draw three cards um, and have those three cards enable Architect is like a really good upside for this kind of effect. For this uh, mana cost especially. So good payoff for being in that strategy. All right, well, that's it for this video. We have one more video in this series of three videos I'm recording all at once. Uh, so check back for tomorrow for that last one. I'll be going over a bunch of uh, Mario Kart cards and some uh, Ghost House cards. Um, yeah, once again, like I say at the end of a lot of these videos, there's a Reddit community around uh, around this where people are suggesting cards, reddit.com slash r slash Mario the Gathering. Uh, and there's also, if you just come, come to my Twitch channel, uh, I'm doing a lot of this card design and playtesting and stuff live. I've started doing some actual playtesting. Uh, we did yesterday. We did a, a draft, and I played the first couple of games, and it was actually super fun. So, <laughs> set, set the set is starting to come together really well. Uh, 
yeah, so check back tomorrow for that for that next video. Thanks for watching.